In this video, we're going to show you how to replace our tracer point. The tools that you will need will be the 3mm Allen key that was provided with the machine, as well as a 5mm Allen key. <clears throat> so, always make sure that the machine is unplugged, prevent any injuries or accidents. And then we're going to use our 5mm Allen key, and we are going to loosen this bolt in the back. After we have that loose, we are going to use our three millimeter Allen key to undo the grub nut, as the manual calls it, on top here. And once we have that loosened, this allows the tracer point to move side to side. We're gonna keep using our five millimeter Allen key to hold it in place while we simply unscrew the tracer tool. Once that is loose, you can then take it out. You can see the threading in the hollow shaft that actually screws onto that bolt in the back. And then you can use your new tracer tool, put it in, and begin to screw clockwise to lock it back into place. Now that we have that locked down, we want the tracer tool to be straight up and down with the flat edge facing out towards the lever handle here. And then we're going to lock down that grub nut on top with our three millimeter Allen key. And that is what prevents our tracer tool from twisting side to side. And now we're going to finish tightening, tightening the rear. and that is how you replace the tracer point. Now, anytime you replace the tracer point, you will have to calibrate the tracer point and the cutting tool together, uh, which we will show in another video. In this video, we're gonna show you how to calibrate the cutting tool along with the tracer tip. Since we have replaced the tracer tip, it will definitely need to be calibrated. The tools that you will need are your three millimeter Allen key, as well as your two adjustment keys that were provided with the Speed 44. Now we are going to need to put these into the A-clamp. That square shoulder there will fit onto there squarely. Now, as always with any other keys, we need to make sure that we have these level and they are. Next, we are going to raise the clamp carriage up to the cutting tool and the tracer point, which we can see that the tracer point is not touching the key where the cutter is. So in order to adjust that, we're gonna use our three millimeter Allen key and we are going to loosen the grub nut on top. And we don't need to loosen it much, just a little to allow it to move and then we're going to use this point back here which is connected to the spring inside the nut that will allow us if we move it clockwise it will move the tracer point out and if we move it counterclockwise it will move it in so as we can see we need to come out more we're gonna go clockwise with it until it touches 
the key. And we want to make sure that the tracer point remains up and down. Once you loosen the grub nut, it will move side to side. So we have it up and down. We're going to lock it back into place. And now we can test the calibration of the tracer point along with the cutter tool by easily moving side to side. And the cutter should barely be scraping along the key just slightly. And that is how you adjust the calibration of the tracer point. Now we're gonna check the carriage stop to make sure that there are 0.2 millimeters of space between the tracer and the jaws when the carriage is brought forward. So the carriage stop is this bolt here that is sticking out and will actually stop the carriage from hitting the tracer so when moved back and forth, it doesn't scrape against the, the jaws here. So business card is a good frame of reference for 0.2 millimeters that we can slide down between. Now it should be close enough that it will hold the business card in place, but enough space that will allow the business card to slide back and forth. If it is too loose or too tight to allow the business card through, then it will need to be adjusted. In order to adjust it, you would loosen the nut here at the back of the bolt, allowing you to then turn the bolt clockwise to bring the bolt forward or counterclockwise to retract the bolt back and then tighten the nut down and then retest the space between the tracer and the jaws. And that is how you check the carriage stop. In this video, we're going to show you how to adjust tension or replace the motor belt. The tools that you will need are your 2.5 millimeter Allen key, as well as a socket wrench with a 10 millimeter socket. I've already unplugged the machine to make sure that there's no power going to it. Uh, to do the adjustment or replacement of the belt, you do have to flip the machine over onto its back. So I have also already removed the chip tray because we don't want those falling, spilling out into the machine as well as all over our work area. First step, we're going to move, remove the safety cover to expose the motor belt. We're going to use our 2.5 millimeter Allen key to remove the three Allen bolts off to the side. And then just take off that cover and set it off to the side for now. Now we can, we can get to our belt, but it has too much tension on it for us to simply pull it off and put a new belt on. At this point, we're going to completely flip the machine over onto its backside. And we're going to get to these bolts here to loosen, uh, which will allow us to move the motor and increase or decrease tension on the belt. There's a fourth bolt under that metal plate that we need to move. We, so we will use our 2.5 millimeter Allen key and remove three Allen bolts that will allow us to lift this metal cover up and out of the way. Alright, now we can set our 2.5 millimeter Allen key off to the side and that metal plate will just lift up and we can also set it off to the side and this now exposes the wiring that we can move out of the way and get to that fourth bolt. Now we're going to use our socket wrench and we're going to loosen but not remove the four bolts. We're going to make them pretty loose so that the motor will move freely.
Now that the four bolts are loosened, we can put tension on the belt and remove tension from the belt by pushing forward on the motor and pulling back on the base. We can then easily remove the motor belt and replace it with a new one. And to replace it with a new one, you want to slide it over the deburring brush under that post there. Make sure you get it in the track that's on the post of the deburring brush and then slide it back on to the rear inside the track. To put tension on it, we're going to push forward on the base and pull back on the motor. And you can see it tighten up. Now the tricky part is to hold the motor in place while you tighten the bolts back down. If you have a second set of hands, use them. And then we're just going to go back through, tighten our four bolts back up. And once you get two of them tightened down, you'll be able to let go of the motor. Freeing up your second hand, make it a lot easier to tighten those last couple down. Now since these are holding the motor in place and it will be incurring a lot of vibration, you do want to make them very tight. Alright, with those four tightened back down, check the tension on the belt. It should kind of flick like a guitar string. And now we can replace our metal cover to protect the wiring from being exposed. Use three Allen bolts to place back to secure the metal cover. And then use your 2.5 millimeter Allen key to tighten those back down. And now we can flip the entire machine back over. And reattach our safety cover. Follow back up with a 2.5 millimeter Allen key, tighten them up. This is a plastic cover, so we don't want to make them too tight and crack the plastic. And that is how you replace or adjust the tension on the motor belt on a Speed 44. The tools that you will need to replace the cutting tool are your wrench that came with the machine, your locking rod, and a 2.5 millimeter Allen key. In this video we're going to show you how to replace the cutting tool once it has become dull or worn and is no longer useful. First up, always make sure that your machine is unplugged. Second step, we're going to take off the safety shield using our 2.5 millimeter Allen key. We've got four bolts on the top of here that need to be removed that will then expose the cutting tool. Now each of these has a small little washer that we need to make sure stays with it and set them off to the side. And underneath each one, between the safety shield and the machine itself, are four little rubber grommets 
that we also need to be careful when removing the safety shield, don't get lost, and also don't fall down into the pit of metal shavings since they are lightly greased. all four of those our safety shield is loose and we can now gently lift up set it off to the side and then take our four rubber grommets and set them off to the side now we have our cutting tool exposed we're going to use our locking rod and we're going to slide that guy in until we get into a locking position now this is a left threaded bolt, so we do need to go the opposite direction with it. So put the locking rod in so that the back of the rod touches the base of the machine, locking it in place, and then we can pull towards us to loosen that bolt. Done with the wrench and the locking rod for now. Now we can loosen the nut the rest of the way. Take it, set it off to the side. Metal washer here, we we'll slide that off. We'll set it off to the side and carefully remove the cutting tool, which can then be replaced with a new, new cutting tool. As you can see, there's a slight angle to the blade and that angled edge needs to be facing the deburring brush. And this needs to sit all the way flat against that bigger cylinder there. So it needs to go over that piece and then our washer is going to go back and you can see that there is a sort of cut out inside part and a flat edge there. We need that cut out part to fit over there. And we'll slide it on and so it's flat there. And then we can reapply our locking nut. And again, this is a left threaded bolt. All right, we've got it finger tightened. We're going to use our locking knob. And now this time we need it to go the opposite direction to lock in place there so that we can push that way with the wrench. So we're going to push away and with the force that holds the locking knob in place, and we want this to be very tight so that it doesn't come loose from the vibration and the motions of the motor. We can now set those off to the side and then we need to reapply our safety shield. So we're gonna take our four rubber grommets and sit them back over their threaded holes. And then we're carefully gonna take the safety shield and place it on top of those grommets over their respective threaded holes. I'm going to hold that in place while I grab one of the Allen bolts and begin to just kind of finger tighten it a little bit so we get it threaded to hold the shield in place while we put the other ones in. And it might take a little bit to get it started, get it lined up with that rubber washer underneath. Once we have all four of those finger tightened, then we can use our 2.5 millimeter Allen key and go back and tighten those up. Now we just want them to be snug. We don't really want to make them too tight. Nothing like what we did with the bolt on the cutter tool uh, because we don't want to crack the plastic, as you can see, is easily cracked. And that is how you replace the cutter tool. In this video, we're going to show you how to swap out the deburring brush on the Speed 44. As before starting any type of maintenance on a machine, always make sure that it is unplugged so there is no electricity flowing through the machine. 
The tools that you will need to swap out the deburring brush are your 2.5 millimeter Allen key, a 4 millimeter Allen key, and your locking rod to hold the whole unit in place. First thing we're going to do is remove the safety cover using our 2.5 millimeter Allen key to remove the three bolts on the left hand side. and just set them out of the way. Now, the safety cover easily pops off and we can move the whole thing off to the side for now. Now the deburring brush is exposed, we're gonna use our locking rod Make sure the clamp carriage is out of the way and slide it through to lock the unit in place. Now we use our four millimeter Allen key to remove the bolt and washer that are holding the deburring brush in place. That can be set off to the side and then your deburring brush easily pops off. Then once you replace it with a new deburring brush, there's no orient specific orientation on the deburring brush. There's no grooves like with the cutter. So you can just pop that back on. Use your bolt and washer and screw those back in place. Now since this is going to be moving when the machine motor is turned on. You want to make sure it's locked down pretty tight. So we're going to use the locking rod and lock the unit back in place. And then use the 4 millimeter Allen key and tighten it back down. Remove the locking rod and the brush is now swapped out. We just need to reapply, reattach the safety cover. And then this cover is made out of plastic, so we don't want to tighten it down too much and crack the plastic. We just want to make sure it's nice and snug. And that is how you change out the deburring brush on the Speed 44. Now we're gonna show you how to check the fuses and if need be, replace them. So after we've unplugged the machine, uh, you can pull out the little door underneath and flip down the lid that houses the fuses. If you need to, you can use the edge of a flathead screwdriver to get underneath and pop them up. And then you can do a visual inspection to see if they are visibly blown or you can use a continuity tester to check and see if current is or is not flowing through the fuse. If current won't flow, then they need to be replaced, and you can use your replacement fuses that came with the machine, and simply pop them in, and lift up the hood, and then push it back in, and that's how you change the fuses.